Hey everybody, how's it going? I just want to make a quick video to show you how you can use a Lee Chess study feature to make a chessable like kind of training uh, study. So if you sign up for an account on LeeChess.org, go learn study. Uh, the thing that's nice about chessable, if you've ever used it before, is that it has a lot of repetition. It asks you a lot of questions about moves, it makes you really think about with your brain when you're you know, doing opening variations, how do I get that spaced repetition in? How do I get the rep repetitions in so I don't uh, forget my opening preparation during a game? So this is kind of how I use it to prepare for my tournament games. As a tournament player, I'm about uh, 1,600 USCF, so I'm a pretty decent player. I'm obviously not master or anything. Um, and there's other features that are also in uh, chess base that are similar to this, but I kind of like the UI and the... The fact that Lee Chess is very is free and open source, and uh, there's never any ads, never any paying for it, uh, and I think these study features, uh, a lot of people don't really know about them or how to really successfully organize uh, their opening repertoire to, uh, you know, get that spaced repetition that you would get from Chessable or Chess Base. Okay, so for example, in uh, this opening repertoire, I am playing the Karo Khan. And it's going to be the exchange variation. If you don't know anything about the Karakhan, it's basically black plays c6 and d5 versus e4 and d4. And there's some main variations here, such as the uh, advanced variation, which is white would push this pawn forward. Uh, there's like a knight to d2 or a knight to c3 variation. And there's the exchange variation, which is the one that we're going to be focusing on. So the exchange variation, white just exchanges pawns in the center. And my main move here is bishop to d3 for white that I've been preparing for. Um, and so we're going to basically use this very first line here to set up the two main variations that I want to play against this exchange and then bishop d3 line. And uh, as we'll see a little bit further down the line, there's basically two moves that I'm going to be focusing on in this uh, branch of the Karo Khan. One move is knight to f6, which is going to be called the Fianchetto variation. It's what I've been studying uh, based off of video lessons that I've been learning from. And the other one is the queen to c7 variation. Um, so basically, you can see here in this line, I have queen to c7, or I have knight to f6. Let me promote this. So queen to c7 or knight f6. These are my two main lines here. Uh, and I actually went pretty far into the knight f6 line here, which I don't usually do for the very first intro uh, line, but for that one I just did to, you know, show the main variation. So next what I would do based off of this is to make a whole other line dedicated to either one of these ideas and make it into a training variation. So for example, if we're talking about knight f6 or queen c7, I'm going to make a new chapter. We'll do queen c7 first. And I'm going to name this the exchange Karo Khan. That's the name of the opening. And it is bishop d3. And the queen c7 variation. Okay, I'm going to do a starting position here. So I have to do everything all over again from the beginning. And the key here is to change the analysis mode to interactive lesson. I'm going to do create chapter. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to do comments and things like that that will populate and I'll be able to train based off of my comments and my hints to myself uh, on what to play. So for example, e4, c6, and we'll go in and, and do some other things with how wrong moves could be handled. Uh, d4, d5, again the exchange variation, bishop d3, knight c6, c3 and now we have our first main variation that is the queen c7 uh, variation that we we're talking about so here is probably where i would give myself the very first hint i should have the rest of these moves down by now and to you know remind myself what the idea behind this move is i know that the queen c7 move is actually all about preventing the bishop to f4 move by white the queen goes here and attacks that square, makes a lot of sense, and that's how I want to try to remember the theory behind this. So here I will put a comment. You can do explain the opponent move and help the player find the next move with a comment. I will say what move prevents white's bishop 
to f4. Okay. And now we'll put in queen to c7. And the, this is where the cool part of the training variation, the, the interactive lesson comes in for uh, Lee Chess. So I can go all the way back to the beginning and do preview here. And we'll say, what do I want to play in this position? It'll go through every move down the line exactly how I want to train it. So boom, this is the exchange variation now. And these prompts can all be customized, as you'll see in just a second, with whatever kind of prompt that you want. So we have C3, and now here is our main prompt for our first main move. What move prevents White's bishop to F4? And we already know that's queen to C7. Boom. So congratulations, I completed this lesson. And I can even add a comment here and say, great. You did it. Just like that. And if I preview this again, we see what move prevents bishop to f4. Boom. Great. I did it. And this, let's just say that this variation is done for now. Now, if you really have someone who doesn't know anything about the Karakon, maybe, and they might play something crazy. Maybe they don't even remember what the Karakon is, like uh, c6 and d5. So if you wanted to do a uh, move and explain any other wrong move, so let's go. And okay, so explain the opponent's move. Something didn't load there for a second. Uh, so here is something that is pretty cool. It says here when any other move wrong move is played, explain why all other, all other moves are wrong. So for example here, anything but the move c6 would be considered wrong to get into the Karakon variation. That would be a totally different opening. I mean, there's an entire cornucopia of openings here that black could choose to play, such as d5, the Scandinavian. I mean, you have knight to f6, which is the Al Alakine defense. You have e5, which is Potentially, the Roy Lopez, you have c5, that is the, uh, the, Sicilian defense. And, we know that c6 is the only one that gets us into the Karakon, so, if you have someone who doesn't even know what the Karakon is, you can do this, explain why all other moves are wrong. You can say, sorry, that's wrong. The Karakon starts with c6. Okay, so if I go back here and preview again, and I play something crazy like h5, boom. It says, sorry, that's wrong. The Karakon starts with c6. So I know to get past that, I have to do c6. And boom, you could do it similarly for any other structure that you want so that you have that feedback. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is go back to the Fianchetto variation so I can show you one that I've built out a little bit more. So here we are in the Fianchetto variation. And uh, I have a few more comments here, so let me run through the preview real quick. What would I play here? C6, D5, takes, takes, Bishop D3, that's our main variation. And I have a little prompt here to say, how do we attack the center and develop a piece? Well, it's going to be Knight to C6, which is our main move there. C3, and now I have a prompt that says what move begins the Fianchetto variation. So not only have I named it properly up here as the Fianchetto variation, but I've also uh, gave myself a little prompt here to remember that I'm not playing queen to c7 this time, I'm not playing knight f6. Okay, now what idea leads to, leads to our main structure? So that is going to be the move g6, because we're going to try to Fianchetto this bishop onto the g7 square. How do we develop a piece? Well, it makes sense that we're going to play bishop to g7, and that's part of my opening repertoire. And I'm going to castle here. And you can see you can add little comments to give yourself more feedback here. So when your move is correct, that's uh, what you can do. So I have a little comment here. This is great. Castling is good. And this is going to be one of my major variations. So h3 is a tricky move according to the videos that I'm watching, what I've been learning. And my main move is going to be knight to h5. But also here, there's tons of other moves if we go back one move. Like, for example, knight b to d2 would be a major variation. Or possibly even 
knight to a3 could be a major variation. Um, so I would probably make another whole interactive lesson here to go over those specific moves. And also what I could do, like say I wanted uh, to kind of have that analysis in here anyway. So when I'm done, I can go back and review that one as well. So uh, here I can play knight there. And I can just keep this uh, in here so that when I'm done, and let's just say, let's just make up some moves here. I think those are correct according to the repertoire. And you can see the variation is here. So once I'm done training with the main line, you know, I could come back for some sidelines if I wanted to. And I'm still going through here. So what move begins the fianchetto? Our main structure, boom, boom, boom. And this, as you can see, this move stayed because that's the main line. But if I wanted to change this up completely, I could promote that variation and go back to the preview here. And now it plays that move instead. So another thing that you could do is to mix up your lines occasionally. You know, change the main lines a little bit, promote some different variations, things that you see more commonly. Or you can also make an entire new chapter just for that idea if you think it's going to be uh, a major one. So for example, here, I would probably have an entire another chapter dedicated to this knight B to D2 move because the structure is a lot different. And this variation would probably end a few moves after this H3. Um, because, I mean, I'm not going to be going way deep, like 20 moves deep. Once you get to 15 or 20 moves, you know, that's probably enough for repetition of an opening. Um, and, I mean, at a certain point as well, there's going to be an entire game that you're going to want to add in here. So what I do with games is usually I'll make a whole other chapter. So, like, for example, we have this Fianchetto variation, and let's say that that particular game, for whatever reason, actually features this H3 move. So I'd have my main line here, and then directly underneath that chapter, I would do example game. Oh, and something I forgot to mention is that you can do emojis in uh, the titles of your games in Lee Chess. You do the windows and a semicolon, and it brings up emojis. So usually for example games, I'll do like a pawn or something like that, and we'll say example game. And this is bishop d3, d3, knight f6, fianchetto, fianchetto, h3, and then the names of the players. And you can pick the game right up from here, and it can either be an interactive lesson or just a normal analysis. Create that chapter, and I mean, however the game proceeded, you can continue from there. And then I would drag this up here, so that it's well nicely organized. So we have our sample line training of the Fianchetto variation, and then we have following that a few example games. So I mean, most chess videos, chess DVDs that you'll see, they'll introduce the main ideas. So you can do that in your very first line here to show the main branches of the opening. And then you go in depth on what you wanna train on. Okay, so like this one would have h3 would be one that I want to train on and knight to b to d2 would be a line that I definitely want to train on. And then follow each one of those lines with your example games. So, for example, I'd have like two example games here where the h3 system was played and I have two, I'd have another training variation for the knight to d2 system. And then I would have a couple example games of a player playing that system. So that is how I organize my games so I can go back through, look at example games, and really get these training repetitions in in an easy way. So, you know, I can go all the way through this line anytime I want, uh, whenever I'm around a laptop or a desktop. Uh, makes it really easy to train and get these repetitions in. And then also the example games, those will be there to remind you of some of the games that, you know, are going to be the inspiration for you playing this opening. Um, and the final thing that I wanted to say is that the training feature uh, where you can preview this stuff is not available, unfortunately, on the mobile apps. But that's kind of why I put these example games in there, too, because if I'm on my phone, I just want to look through a game real quick. 
it will be easy to come back here. Just look at the example games from that tournament, you know. And I want to look at my uh, main lines before my game. I can easily look on my phone and see, you know, the I have these two ideas available to me. I have queen to c7 available to me. I have knight to f6 available to me. And get some of the main ideas behind those lines uh, just, you know, in an easily accessible area at the very top here. So, uh, in terms of the Karo Khan, what I would do next with this, um, I would finish out my uh, two variations, the Fianchetto variation and the Queen to C7 variation with a couple of example games and a couple of, um, and a couple of training variations on the major, major ideas I want to get to by move 15 or 20, right? And then I would have a different intro here for, say, the advanced variation. So I would easily make a, we'll do this, Karo Khan, advanced variation, advanced variation. And I always do a little book emblem here Oops. as my emoji for being like a mainline introduction intro and let's just say that this is going to be a normal analysis and this would be the advanced variation so this would be like another branch here what moves am I going to play here that are going to be my main branches probably bishop f5 right um, so whenever I get to a spot where these branch off into two main ideas like let's say here, white has an option of knight to c3, which I think is not considered too great, and that move knight to f3, which is considerably better. So maybe I'd make some variations for those, training variation of how to counter knight c3, and a training variation on how to play against this knight to f3 move, right? So that's kind of how I think about it when I'm using these Lee chess studies, and you know, how you can easily use this to get repetitions in in a different way and you know having your own feedback and really going through every single individual aspect of your openings that you're trying to study because a lot of times chessable you know it has a lot of great prompts and a lot of great training but it's not necessarily in your own words so if you really want to understand all the ideas of these openings you really have to start putting things in your own words and i think the Lee chess study feature is a great feature that exists that a lot of people do not know about. So I hope you guys find that useful and I'll talk to you next time.